I want to read a few verses from Luke chapter 23, Luke chapter 23 and ver reading at verse 11. And Herod with his men of war set him at naught, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. And the same day Pilate and Herod were made friends together, for before they were at enmity between themselves, in other words they were enemies. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, Ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverted the people. And behold, I having exam examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, touching those things whereof ye accuse him. No, nor yet Herod. For I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him, speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore chastise him and release him, for of necessity uh, he must release one unto them at the feast. And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas who for a certain sedition made in the city, and for murder was cast into prison. Pilate therefore, willing to release Jesus, spake again to them. But they cried out, saying, Crucify him! Crucify him! And he said unto them the third time, Why, what evil hath he done? I have found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. And they were instant with loud voices requiring that he might be crucified. And the voices of them and of the chief priests prevailed. And Pilate gave sentence that it should be as they required. And he released unto them him that for sedition and murder was cast into prison, whom they had desired. But he delivered Jesus to their will. And that's the terrible situation we find the most, the most criminal sort of a trial that was possible. We see it took place to the Son of God. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ came down from heaven. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. He came to save you and he came to save me. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because of that we're heading down to hell, that place of judgment, because of our sins that have not been forgiven. Hey, if that's your case, you might be listening to this message and say, well I'm saved, I'm a Christian. Well that's great, praise God for that. But I'm here to preach to those who are not saved, to those who are heading down to hell because of their sins that have not been forgiven. But you and I can receive forgiveness for our sins. And the only way is through the precious shed blood of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. You see, Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. He was buried and He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures so that you and I could be saved, so that you and I could receive forgiveness for our sins. Now, none of us deserve it. We all deserve hell and the lake of fire for all eternity. And yet we see that well-known verse, the most well-known verse in the whole world, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Do you have that everlasting life? You see, it's only available through one person. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Yeah, I know you've got physical life, it's obvious you're walking around. But I'm talking about spiritual and eternal life. We're in such great need of this. To be born again, as I set up the other end, to be born again into God's family through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Become a child of God through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That one who was crucified on the cross, you and I should have suffered for our own sin. And that will take place if we die without Christ as our Saviour. But I'm here to tell you that your soul can be saved. And that's why I'm concerned about your soul. You know, God doesn't want our souls to perish. 
You see, he that hath the Son hath life. And he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. You see, we're condemned already. We've condemned ourselves by our sin. See, we have a sinful nature that the Lord Jesus Christ does not have. That's why he could never sin. I mean, he's God anyway. One of his titles is Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. To think that God would come down and be clothed with humanity so that he might die upon the cross and taste death for every man. You and I deserve to be punished for our sin. It's obvious. You see, God is the most just judge in the whole universe. There's no bribing God. You know, the, the um, judges of this world can be bribed with give them enough money and they'll say you're not guilty, but in reality you are guilty. But there's nothing like that concerning our God. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? You know, God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ. That's why I'm here. I want you to know there's a judgment ahead, but there's no need to go into the judgment of God because the Lord Jesus Christ has died upon the cross and made it possible that you and I could have salvation for our sins. I wonder, are you ready to meet God? If you were to die right now, where would you be? Would you be up in heaven through faith in Christ as your Saviour or down in hell because you've rejected or neglected the only way of salvation open to mankind through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. You see, Acts 4.12 says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ has been shed on the cross so that you and I could receive forgiveness for our sins, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins.